Hi everybody, welcome to my romance novel, From a Stranger, Chapter 15. Let's begin. Ilio, five years ago, May 12th. The storm hadn't seemed so bad when we left the party. They were nice enough to let us take a couple of beers for the road. Me and Billy took the road by the shore. The plan had worked. Billy had gone dancing with Shiori and kissed her. It wasn't a huge kiss or a French kiss, just a little one. And look at him now. I've never seen him so happy. All it took was a beer to make him relax. No parents around, no one to stop us. Someone had smuggled it in. And Billy was ready to make his move. It actually took two beers before he worked up the courage to talk to her. And she had said yes the first time. That was worth it. The wind increased. The swells to our right had grown epic. Tonight would be a night for pros only, if even they dared. The rain pelting the car sounded like a spray of bullets. Maybe we should go back, Billy said, and took a long drink from the half-full can. It will pass in a second. I leaned forward to try and see out the window better, but I could see nothing. I flashed the brights. They only held by a few feet. Changing the wipers to maximums did no good. I still couldn't see. Roll your window down. See anything? Billy did. The rain flooded the car. I lowered my window. We hit something. The impact exploded the crash cushions before us. White powder filled the air. The car spun to the right, or flipped, or rolled. I couldn't tell. Billy was screaming. So was I. The car landed with the bang. Buckets of water rushed in the windows, filling the car. We were half underwater. Billy screamed cut off, gurgled. We've got to get out of here. I looked around. It wasn't deep. We could swim for sure. It wasn't far. Maybe ten feet? Maybe a dozen? The next wave passed, pushing the car against the rocks. Come on, I said. We pushed the doors open, and I somehow got over the car to help Billy. He was bleeding from a cut on his forehead. I grabbed him and hauled him closer to shore. The next wave hit, bigger than I thought, pushing us down towards the rocks. I helped Billy up. He helped me. The wind tore at us. The rain hit us harder. No, not rain. Hail. Another wave hit, smaller, but just as powerful. I grabbed Billy's hand. He screamed something. We hit the rocks. Billy stopped moving. The water dragged us on them. My left knee was screaming. Something besides water dripped down my face. The shore was so close. We hadn't crashed more than a dozen feet off the beach, but in the dark, it could have been a mile. The surf was wild, pushing us one way, then the other. Off the rocks, back onto the rocks. Black water, black sky, black rain. I couldn't tell where to go. I held Billy, crawling and dragging and slithering him up through the surge. He wasn't moving. I kept his head above water, but the surf was too strong. He kept going under. A two-foot wave somehow pushed us to shore. My la left leg wouldn't move. It screamed. Billy didn't move. His skin was as cold as the water. My best friend's neck bobbed like some insane bobblehead. There was the car, drowning in the water. Its front end smashed. Horn wouldn't shut up. Headlights still on and making the incoming waves look huge. Hail hit all around, plopping the water, hitting the car in a staccato burst. Billy, I pulled him by the shirt, ignoring the blinding, throbbing agony that was my knee. I dragged his body again and again. I gained an inch. The current dragged us back. Billy, hang on. The wave dashed over us, filling my water with mouth. It swamped both of us, and when it had passed, we were further from shore. I couldn't tell if Billy was breathing. Billy! He bobbed on the waves like some doggy toy. Somebody help us! Billy didn't move. His skin was so cold, dead kind of cold. I dragged him forward, trying to grip something on the bottom, just loose rocks. Help! I screamed until I was hoarse, and then I kept screaming. I had done this. I had been driving, drunk. Danny. That's why he's my hero, Billy said quietly. Shattered kneecap, and he somehow kept me alive. It wasn't until later that we learned that the rocks had broken my L4. Ilio was in the hospital for six weeks and in rehabilitation for a year learning to walk again, and all because he saved my life. That's me, big hero. Ilio took a breath and blew it out. Why don't you tell him the rest? About how you were in the hospital for a month, then went to a rehabilitation center for a year, almost missed graduation. Tutored, missed out on almost everything in senior year. How about all the modifications Sal made to your house and the store to fit your wheelchair? About all the grants and programs your folks applied for to get your van and your chairs? That's all footnote stuff. I placed my hand on Ilio's. 
You don't have to tell me the rest. I can see it's too personal. I'm sorry, I asked. There isn't any more. Billy changed lanes and slowed to take a turn off. Billy used swimming and surfing as rehab. He can move. He can dance. My best friend's a fire dancer. Timmy trained him to walk again. Long walks on the beach or in the surf. And Timmy was always there. He must have been some dog, I said. We called each other daily, sometimes texted each other hourly, and somehow we teamed up to get us both through it. I owe him everything. My dad helped him with his board. Like I said, he's my hero. I'm no hero. Billy pulled to the side of the road and turned to face us. Don't do this to yourself, because you are the only one who thinks this. You saved my life. That's all anybody cares about. We had gone to a party, Ilya whispered. Billy had just turned 17. We didn't know better. Ilio, stop, Billy ordered. Back then we thought drinking was cool, and we had a lot of beers that night. We shouldn't have been on the road. I shouldn't have been driving. That's why the strongest thing you drink is a Coke, I said. Ilio nodded. We should have been normal kids, doing normal things. Instead, I destroyed our lives. Would you stop that, Billy said. We were drunk, yes. The road was wet. The rain was coming down hard. The surf was strong. You saved me. Yes, we made mistakes. It was a bad scene, and in spite of it all, you pulled it together and saved us both. Both of them. Ilio and Billy. A team. Ilio and Barney. You have that look again, Ilio said. You're going to get wrinkles. I understand now why you and Barney helped me so much. You were still saving Billy. What do you mean? Billy said, shutting the engine off. I was a mess last weekend, and when Ilio wasn't with me, Barney was. Ilio by night, Barney by day. Together, they put me back together. Barney told me about your breakdown, and I told him you might be suicidal. Hell, anyone would be after what you'd gone through. Here you were, all alone, in some strange place. Nobody back home cared enough to, for, you even, for you to even call them for help. Ilio pulled my hand to his lips and kissed it. I kept imagining you washing up on some beach, cold and lifeless, like Billy and me almost did, and I couldn't let that happen. I told Barney. He agreed. You needed help. She became my friend, I said. You know you changed my life. You changed mine. When did it become serious, Billy said. Maybe when we went surfing, I said. I still have the note you wrote in my car. It's in Timmy's old ashes box. I didn't know who Timmy was then. I just knew you were hurting. Helio grabbed my hand. Would it have made a difference if you had known? Pain is pain. Do you know what I never told Noah yesterday? No. Those chambers in your surfboard are covered by wood, so they are dark. You carried a pain in your soul that was very deep and very dark. I kept thinking that somehow we needed to build a window and let the light in. I should never have let you see my board, Helio said. Too late, I said. Babe, you're terrible. Helio leaned up, I leaned over, and we kissed. Billy sighed. Young lust is a wonderful thing. We drove the rest of the way in silence. At the end, we pulled into a parking lot of a beach I didn't recognize, and Billy pulled up to the front and parked into a handicapped spot right next to the beach, where Isaac, G, and Johnny waited. I knew now why Billy carried all the boards and supplies. He could park right where they needed him. Do you know what this means? Billy pulled into the parking space and shut down the engine. I brought you two together. That means you owe me a finder's fee. I'll arrange for you to dance with a hula girl tomorrow night, Ilio said. Make it too.